good afternoon everyone uh, today i'll talk about uh, you know build up on what the mom and said around the next frontier in ai which i call ecosystem intelligence and i want to kind of talk about the future of where the next 20 years of ai will be in this context and how we need to think about it differently so uh, recently sundar pichai said something very important he said ai is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on and you can you know what humanity has worked on we have invented the fire the wheel the the rockets to go to moon and and uh, you know the internet and all of that and he's saying ai is the most important thing humanity has worked on and it is something that is more profound than electricity and fire and if i look at that statement i don't think he's talking about the current state of ai he's talking about the potential of ai and i think we need to collectively get there and we know that there is that potential and and when we hear about initiatives that are happening all over the world i think we can get there right so that is the potential and i think we should be able to achieve that and we need to systematically go towards it um, now let me throw another construct here the ai is not the only technology and let's we talked about what we call a convergence of technologies that is happening today and it is this convergence where the magic is and ai which is today was there 70 years ago also but because of the cloud and the internet and the devices now it is more pronounced more accessible right so i think this convergence has created a unique magic for mankind today and once we recognize that convergence we can do a lot of wonderful things today uh, now let me talk a little bit about the five eyes that i think a great product has right so the first thing is we talk about infrastructure if you look at the google search engine or the or the tesla ecosystem or a future smart city or an ola uber they all have the same quality right it's built for the planet we all understand scale has been mastered interfaces are beautiful they are becoming more and more human like speech enabled and all that that is the second i third all these systems are now becoming more and more intelligent they are not just uh, you know giving you a uh, Uh, a dumb result they are giving you a very intelligent result and sometimes you wonder whether these uh, systems are reading your mind right when youtube recommendation is just perfect or google auto suggestion is just perfect or the car that ola uber allocates is just 2 minutes away so there is even a cab in 5 minutes and uh, you know instantly you can download a movie and start watching right so on netflix so we are in a world of instantaneous and the fifth i that is missing right now and this is the future that i'll talk about is the integratedness of an ecosystem so today we have built individual models great but we have to integrate them to build ecosystem products and this is the fifth i that we are going to capture in the next few years or decades so let me talk about that uh, and if i look at the evolution of products right the product started evolving from being physical very reliable products which came with what we call programmed intelligence so the intelligence was part of the you know code that in inside these and they were running it they were not becoming better over time those were product 1.0 physical reliable products we continue to improve these products continue to become smarter tv smarter phones smarter cars now so these products are evolving and at the same time product 2.0 happened and that is where a lot of digital you know scalable crowd sourced intelligence came into being and these products taught us how to build planet scale things learn and iterate and continue to improve with the feedback data right and that's where a lot of our deep learning machine learning and all of the technologies let's be talked about is embedded and now if i think about product 3.0 where are we going from here we have mastered physical products we have mastered digital products and now we are about to master what we call hybrid or physical digital products right and this is where the next evolution of intelligence is going to be needed we are going to think about what we call an ecosystem intelligence right how does a whole smart city work as a thousand api system instead of one google search which is a two api system so how do we go from here to there is the next leap in our product thinking and that is going to require us to think differently about our it architectures and our ai architectures as we go forward so these are examples of uh, ecosystem products right so they are not a single search engine or a google maps or a youtube or a linkedin or a whatsapp those are individual products with few apis now we are going to leap into now that we have 
master the art of building doors how do we master the art of building an end to end optimized refinery with thousands of moving parts how do we build an end to end connector you know connected ecosystem like uh, like a telecom network uh, and make it intelligent not just build it we know how to build it 4g 5g but how do we think about ai in such a complex system how do we think about healthcare in a complex system not just how to do x-ray better or how to do diagnosis better but how do we think about it as a whole the supply chain of medicines the prediction of diseases evolving the genomics of people giving the right advisory to everyone and all of that right how do we think about agriculture like uh, rama ma'am said uh, as a whole as not just you know 20 apis that somebody does iot well somebody does drones well somebody does uh, supply chain well and all that but how do we integrate all this together into an ecosystem called agriculture so there is imagine a one ai art, it architecture for the agriculture ecosystem of a country it's one product and we all contribute to that one product today you know a farmer has to download 20 apps to get his work done right so how do we integrate and this integration is the new innovation that is going to be required so what does it mean to build a complex system like that so they have billions of entities of hundreds of types so if you look at a telecom network you have customers you have devices you have cell towers you have uh, all the sensors you have all the facilities all of that they have trillions of uh, interactions happening all the time right like people are joining the network leaving the network upgrading the plan making a payment doing a phone call downloading something all these events are happening simultaneously right there are complex web of metrics that are at play how do we think of customer metrics operation business environment everything and they are all connected to each other how do we think about decisions that the systems have to make if you take agriculture there are many many decisions to be made what to grow when to harvest where to sell where to get my next fertilizer how much to put all these are decisions right and any ecosystem is making you know thousands of decisions like that every day and then how do we think about the different workflows what what do we need to execute how do we find inefficiency in the system how do we expand the scope of what we are doing how do we find something if something goes wrong so these are workflows now compare this to google search google search is a two api very advanced doing an amazing job scaling at a planet level system and that is continue to going to improve but now we are in a different world this is a new paradigm of thinking which is not about a two api system this is a thousand api system and how do we make these thousand apis work together there is no single company single government single startup who can do this and we need to change our approach to how we build such complex systems together right and that is what uh, these things are made up of So I came up with this framework. There's a talk on YouTube where I said, "Look, to build such a thing, we need to expand the scope of what we think AI is. What are the different layers in the AI stack?" And I talk about these eight layers plus the digitization layer, which is how do we make sure first that all data is digitized? No printouts, no handwritten reports, no homework in the school notebook, no logs in a physical paper, no receipts physically printed, no ECG physically printed. Physical data is obsolete. it is useless it is only for human consumption how do we stay with digital data forever and continue to use it so digitization of physical data to digital data then comes the different layers how do you interpret speech interpret text interpret images interpret satellite data interpret genomic data how do you interpret a tweet or a review so these are interpretation models that convert low level semant you know semantically low level data into high level data so we need a layer and a lot of work going on in deep learning is about interpretation of variety of data into semantically high level things how do we think about causality what causes what and therefore what causes what and therefore what causes what can we build a causality diagram of a domain and say because of this this happened and because of that this happened and now i understand the entire complex you know value chain of causality that's a causality layer and how do you build prediction models we understand we build prediction for three reasons to intervene something that may go wrong to optimize our decisions and to personalize our decisions these are three reasons we build prediction models across industries so how do we think about that layer how do we explain our predictions Today AI is not going to be trusted if we cannot explain why we made a decision. 
or you know finding biases and all of that in the system right so explainability is the next layer how do we think about controllability what variables are controllable what are observable and how do i build a mapping between these two variables to the output how do we think about controllable systems right whether it's an autonomous vehicle or a or a traffic in a city or you know the prices of oil in the world market right if you will controllability and then how do we think about simulation is going to be a new skill we are not going to be able to just build simple one off models we need to be able to simulate our policies and say if i increase taxes by this much what will happen to the economy of the country if i change this temperature in this refinery what will happen to the outcome of the without doing it on the ground can i simulate it in a digital twin is going to be a very important skill set in a complex system we don't need simulations in x ray and simple models but we need simulation in a complex system and if we can simulate how do we optimize the system and say so this is the best combination of control variables to optimize a smart city uh, in all possible ways or a telecom network or a refinery or an agriculture system how do we optimize and there is a lot of wastage that is happening today our resources are used very poorly we don't understand supply demand and we are not optimizing for it properly how do we think about optimization and finally the holy grail of ai is adaptation how do we adapt when we go back from covid to normal how do we adapt when the fourth wave comes how do we adapt when the oil prices are high how do we adapt right when the traffic patterns in the morning and evening and and afternoon are different on a telecom network how do we adapt adaptation is the ultimate holy grail in a complex system right so these are some of the new ideas that we need to think about and say this is what we need to think about how to build these complex ecosystems and then how do we think about solving it at a top down level right there are many sectors that need help every sector has many beneficiaries every uh, beneficiary uses a lot of products and every product needs a lot of services and within ai services there are many many kinds of ai services and like i said we don't have a way to say how do i solve healthcare as a whole no single company or somebody can do it so in a way we need a new kind of economy which rama ma'am also talked about where every person whether it's a student or a freelancer or a startup or a researcher or a google can contribute their apis to the thousand apis we need to solve that ecosystem and that is the kind of new way of thinking we are going to need to get there imagine if a student doing a phd or a masters thesis can contribute to the ai economy and monetize his work and not just to a kaggle competition yeah? so let me just close so now we talked about how we need a different kind of a framework of thinking how do we need a different skill set of a data scientist so what we are doing we are starting a new program in geo institute where we are going to develop a lot of different kinds of skills starting from algorithmic thinking how do you think about the different beautiful frameworks how do you not start data science from data sets but work backwards from problem statements how do i make them go to a farmer and say understand what his problems are understand what a teacher needs understand what a student needs in a tier 2 city understand what a you know patient needs in a tier 3 village where there are no doctors then you will start inventing ai ai will not be invented because somebody gave you a data set this is a very important mindset that we need to develop in our future data scientists uh the next is data thinking how do you fall in love with your data data has a lot of stories to tell but not everybody knows how to listen to it well so how do we create those skill sets domain thinking the first thing i learned after my phd was domain knowledge is equally or more important than just data sets and tools so how do we think about domain and you know beautiful domains all the domains that we work in manufacturing has its own interesting problems and nuances every domain has its own nuances and how do we make data scientists fall in love with the domain and with the data and with the problem statements and then produce solutions right how do we think about top down systems like i said it's not going to be a one api two api system anymore we're going to need a complex ecosystem of many many ai apis working together the output of one is an input to the other how do we help them understand become better system thinkers only then they can create a smart city ai or an agriculture ai right it's not about bottom up thinking only it's about top down thinking how do we think about scales we all understand that we are moving towards scale 
So handling large data sets should be as simple as doing an Excel job, uh, but not in Excel, in, in big data technologies. How do we think about solutions and not just building a model and deploying a model? Have you really solved the end-to-end -end problem that a farmer needs? Can you take a picture uh, as a farmer and get a fertilizer delivered end-to-end -end from sensor to data to insight to optimization and then delivery on the ground? That is a solution, not a model. Model is just a part of a bigger solution. How do we create such thought processes and ethical thinking? Because everybody is worried about creating, you know, uh, demons out of AI. So obviously, with great power comes great responsibility. So there are lines we cannot cross. There are regulations happening all over the world. And how do we make sure our next generation data scientists don't think of ethical aspects as an afterthought, but on day one when they come to an industry. They know that there are certain boundaries they cannot cross, right? right? And, and they, they know how to detect those boundaries. boundaries. So, so let me stop, stop there. there. And I think the future of AI is amazing. Is amazing. The next 20 years are going to be much more awesome, awesome than the last 20 years. years. And we are all very excited. And thanks to Min for inviting me for this summit. Thank you.